Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Today we're gonna make some very playable terrain. We're gonna paint it fast, and it's gonna look great. There's a couple of classic designs for playable terrain pieces. First, there's the corner ruin. Two walls of a destroyed building. They stand up nicely on their own, they block or obscure line of sight, and they're a great place to take cover. Another terrain motif is platforms and bridges. This is a simple way to make a board with two or more tiers. Characters can stay on the ground and run under the bridges, or they can fight up on the catwalks. There are different pathways around the board depending on whether you like to take the high road or the low road. I'm making a few corner ruins because they're traditional, but I'm most excited about making a playable, multi-tiered village. The core ingredient here is the Kazumi Temple set from Archon Studio. They make affordable plastic terrain, and they run Kickstarters on a pretty regular basis. Now, full disclosure, they sent me some kits as review stock, but I'm under no obligations. I clipped the sprues and stored them under my bed more than a year ago, but now the time has finally come. I want some cool terrain for Relic Blade. Most of the bits in this set are 4-inch wall segments that end in square pillars. You can build both vertically and horizontally. There are pegs and holes to hold things together, but it's also possible to use magnets. I'm using pegs, and I'm gluing everything together. This is the same type of plastic that companies like Games Workshop use, so plastic cement works just fine. I used Tamiya Extra Thin, but this is one of those cases where a tube of tester cement might have been really useful. For the corner ruins, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just doing what the model kit wants me to do. This line does have a few platform bits. These have these really weird support clips that peg into the holes on the columns. I'm not really a fan of this. I'll probably find something to do with the bits, but I won't be using them for their intended purpose. The corner ruins were really straightforward to build. For the platforms or plateaus, I needed to find something for the horizontal surface. For this, I'm using bits from the Dungeons & Lasers line. Dungeons & Lasers is sort of a modular dungeon builder, and it has a sturdy plastic floor. The deciding factor for me with the Dungeons & Lasers tiles is the fact that the dimensions line up with the walls. Two floor tiles is about the length of one section of wall. I glued the Dungeons & Lasers floor on top of the Kazumi temple walls, and these are starting to look like buildings. Functionally, I think of this style of terrain as a platform. But yeah, it's also a cozy little Aztec house. Or Kazumi house, not Aztec, Kazumi. Next, I wanted to fill in that top edge and make it look good. I pulled out some milliput and some epoxy sculpt. I mixed up the epoxy putty, rolled out a long worm of it, and filled the gap. For some of the buildings, I smoothed over my fingerprints and then used my hobby knife to cut lines in the putty to make it look like a row of brickwork. On other buildings, I used a spare bit with some nice texture on it to imprint a cool design all along the top edge. Both techniques were easy, and it turned out that they both looked pretty good. The rampart kits have some decorative bits to fill in the empty peg holes, so I went and glued those in place. Next up is Vallejo Texture Paste. This paste represents stone crumbs from the ruined buildings and some dirt that's built up over the years. I'm using the texture to disguise some of the joints and add a bit of variety to the flat areas. This stuff is nice and durable when it dries. Durability and functionality are my guiding principles for this whole project, and with that in mind we're still doing what we can to make things look nice. We've got a beautiful day on our hands, so it's time to paint. I went through my collection of spray paint and pulled out a handful of different colors. Stone can be almost any color that we want, and this stone will also have a lot of dirt and moss on it. I started with black. I'm trying to get the underside of things with this pass, but I'm also using this step to add some more texture. I've got some unsanded grout that I'm sprinkling onto the wet paint. This is a fine powder that'll stick on there and add a little extra character to these ancient ruins. Now since I'm adding extra texture, I'm willing to use up some of my old, almost empty cans of spray paint. I wouldn't let these anywhere near minis that I actually cared about, but these are great for sticking grout onto plastic ruins. It's nice to get some use out of the dregs of these bottles. Next up is Red Brown. Red Brown is a great undercoat for almost anything. On this layer, I'm trying to make sure that I cover up all of the bare plastic. There's still some black here and there, but Red Brown is the main color that I really want as the undercoat. 
It's got so much warmth and character. Then I've got green, light green, light brown, and gray that I'm spritzing on. I'm holding the cans farther back, and I'm trying to be gentle. I'm basically spraying at random. I want red, brown, green, and gray to all be visible on these buildings. And for all of this, I'm just using cheap paint from the hardware store. Here's where we ended up. I let things dry a bit, and then I gave everything a coat of matte sealant to dull down the sheen and add a bit of protection. Obviously, spray painting like this is a fast and aggressive way to go, but honestly, I'm loving these results. When I started, I really couldn't predict what the final product was going to look like, but I knew that all the colors would tie the pieces together and make them look cool. The terrain is giving off the vibe of an old stone temple buried deep in the forest. Perfect. We've got a few more steps to do at the painting desk, but we'll keep things fast and loose. On the flat areas where I added texture paste, I'm painting those in with brown to make them look like dirt that's built up on there. Then I'm adding green to make it look like moss, grass, and other plants are starting to grow on top of these rocks. I added splotches of brown and green to a few different areas, especially along the bottom edges of the walls, to make them look like they're really part of the jungle. After that, I just dry brushed everything with off-white. All of the paint that I'm brushing on is cheap craft paint. The dry brush is vanilla from Craftsmart. These terrain pieces have a ton of patterns and glyphs that I could have picked out in different colors. But nah, this is way easier, and I think it still looks great. And yeah, the paint job is pretty much done. This part of the project went really fast. From here, we could glue on some moss and vines and other vegetation. In particular, it might be nice to cover up a few of the visible gaps and seams in the plastic. But for now, I'm gonna leave these pieces just how they are. Durable and extremely playable. We have a nice selection of corner ruins, and the more intact buildings are gonna be great as raised platforms. Now we just need to build some ramps and bridges. I'm doing this with a variety of popsicle sticks, stir sticks, and other assorted craft wood. I have no idea what I'm doing here, but luckily it isn't too hard. What I ended up doing is gluing together some of the larger pieces of wood to get the dimensions that I wanted. Then I cut up some coffee stir sticks and glued them on top as planking. This is very simple, but I think these are going to look good and work well in games. One way to make them fancier would be to add some railings. I have some woodworking dowels here that would make some pretty nice posts, but I decided not to use them. Let's keep things simple, durable, and playable. I was careful not to get craft glue on the top surface of the boards. I want to use wood stain, and the glue would keep the stain from soaking in right. I have some cherry oak stain from Minwax, and I used a big brush to slather it all over everything. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. And now for the moment of truth. Let's play around with this set on some sample boards. We'll plop some Relic Blade minis down there and see how they look. Oh yeah, this is great. The camera isn't fully capturing the glory here, but this is awesome. Getting a table of matching terrain like this is so satisfying. This whole project was quicker and easier than I thought it was going to be. I'd been thinking about this for a while, and I'm glad that I finally dove on in. I should have done it sooner. One sitting to clip sprues, two sessions to build the terrain, and two more sessions to paint it. Painting terrain is a great way to take a break from painting minis. You get to work on a much larger canvas, you get to work fast, and you don't need to worry about the details. Then, when you're done, you've got a cool place for your minis to hang out. It's a fun backdrop for pictures, too. Well, that's about it for this time. Thanks so much for watching.